This video is brought to you by Squarespace. You can save 10% and get a free 14-day trial. Start at squarespace.com slash photorectv. To another video. In this one, I want to take the basic tips and techniques that I've shown you around the new Lightroom Classic masking tools and give you some power techniques that I think can really speed up your editing and, for me, I find have kept me uh, in Lightroom longer. I don't need to move to Photoshop as quickly these days because of these tools. So I've got my favorite shot of 2021 here, this moment when uh, Little Bear is helping Mama keep an eye out for some unseen threats off in the distance. Uh, I've done some basic edits already to it, and I'm going to go into the masking tools, and I'm going to ask it to find our subject, which hopefully it'll do a good job of the bears. Does it get all of them? Yes, not bad. Currently, I'm using the show overlay with a green overlay on, color overlay on black and white. I think that makes it really easy to kind of quickly see how well it's done. I notice that it's missing a little bit of the tops of the ears here. Maybe it uh, got a little too much between these two bears. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I think I'm pretty happy with this. Right away, let's rename this mask. Let's get in the habit and call it bears. Uh, and now, of course, I can make some edits to these bears. I can brighten them right away, make them stand out a little bit more. I'd like to bring the highlights down, almost the same as I'm doing globally, but just to the bears themselves. Look how nice that is to get some more detail in the darker areas, the shadows of the bear. Um, blacks down just a tiny bit, whites up, and add a little texture and clarity. Make them punch and stand out just a bit more. Pretty happy with that. Now, it would be nice to affect the background now. Uh, we don't have a mask tool to say background, sky, subject, and then of course all of the tools we have before. But there is a technique that will allow you to easily get the background. So I've got my bear's mask. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to duplicate bear's. So now I've ended up with the bears and a bears copy. Notice that they've gone way too bright now because we have two masks sitting on top of each other, each mask with these settings. So we've basically doubled these settings. Uh, let's fix that right away. Let's double click effect. So we've zeroed back out for that one overlay. Now, if we come down to the subject in the bears copy, actually, let's go ahead and rename this right now and call it background. There's some serious foreshadowing for you. In the background, now, right here with subject selection, not the, not the top of the mask, but the actual part of the mask inside, we have an option to invert it. The keyboard command or shortcut is an apostrophe. So you could also just tap the apostrophe key on the keyboard. When you hit that, you now flip this mask. So I have two masks. Let's minimize this one. You see them? And also nicely shows you how black conceals and white reveals. So now we are on the background layer. Uh, I said layer, background mask. No layers yet in Lightroom. Uh, and anything I do will affect only the background. So what can we do? Well, let's darken it a little bit. Let's drop contrast, highlights, shadows, uh, texture and clarity down a little bit, uh, and maybe even saturation down. Now. There's a really great way to make your subject stand out from the background, and that is to soften it a little bit. But be careful. In the wise words of friends and family of Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And you now have this great power to very quickly and easily select the background and only the background and say, be soft. And then boom, look at how crisp and clear your subjects stand out. But this is now defying the laws of uh, physics and cameras and the way your focal plane works. There's no way that only your subjects can be in focus. What about the grass right next to them? Uh, and yes, you can see now that some of the grass right up against their fur, of course, is selected. And so somebody looking at this who knows even a little bit about photography is going to kind of feel like this is over edited. And I never personally want somebody to look at my pictures and say, this looks over edited. So you need to stay within the bounds. You just want to take what you've already done in the camera and push it a little bit further, but keep it within the realm of realism. And in that vein, I want to take this a step further. So yes, this is about as far as I feel like I can bring texture and clarity down. But let's create a new mask. 
I'm going to use the linear gradient, and I think you'll see quickly what I'm doing here. And I'm going to just kind of draw down from the top, and I'm going to add to this mask. So within mask one, another linear gradient drag up from the bottom, and I am taking that idea of the focal plane right through here and leaving it alone. But outside of that, I am uh, creating these gradients that are going to help me soften the background a little bit more. And I say, whoa, wait a sec, you're hitting the bears. You're going to run into that same kind of problem here. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to work with that. Let's go ahead and rename this and call it focal plane what? I, I should have thought this through before I did this. Um, more soft. Let's do that. That's perfect. So we're just going to get a little bit more softness off in the distance and also in the foreground. And we want it off our bears. So of course, you could come in here. This is the linear gradient. One is the one that's touching the bears. And I could subtract and say brush and then brush it off the bears here, right? Well, why don't we just say select it subject. So subtract from linear gradient one, subtract from mask with select subject. I read that kind of funny, but I think you know what I mean. And watch this magic. Look at that. Just like that, it's off our bear. And so that focal plane is now naturally falling back behind the bear and naturally falling down here in front of the bears. And so we can take this texture and clarity and bring it down just a little bit further. Let's even, let's what happens if we just move dehaze to the left a little, just to soften that and maybe just darken it just a bit more. Let's be extreme for a second, just so you can kind of see what's happening. You just want to be careful, make sure that it's blending naturally. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It's 2022. You need to have your own piece of the internet, a place to display your beautiful photos, sell your work, or just share updates on your life. Squarespace makes it all so easy and their new portfolio page makes it ridiculously simple to build a beautiful, gorgeous gallery. And if you get stuck, their 24 seven tech support is there to help. You get a complete free 14 day trial, no credit card required. Plus you can save 10% when you do go to buy by starting at squarespace.com slash TV. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, hit that thumbs up button. It's a nice way to tell the algorithm that it's worthwhile to watch. And if you'd like to be notified of future videos, hit that subscribe along with a little bell. Mm -hmm.